Hey there, welcome to my quick tutorial on creating a simple rain effect for 2D Unity games, specifically without the need for any external assets or plugins. At the time of this recording, I'm using the latest stable release of Unity, which is 2019.1.0f2. Let's do it. My starting point today will be this scene. It's just composed of a single background sprite. We'll be working towards this, the same scene, but with an added particle system that we'll be tweaking to create a rain effect. This might not look exactly perfect to you, but that's okay. Part of my goal with this video is to show you how you can tweak your particle system to give you the results you want. So let's start out by getting our particle system into the scene. I'm going to right click the scene hierarchy, create an empty game object, and call it something like Rain Generator. I'll then move over to the inspector and ensure that I've reset its transform by clicking the gear icon on the transform component and selecting Reset. Finally, I'll click Add Component and search for and select Particle System. At this point, you're likely not seeing any particles at all, or you're seeing them emerge from behind your background. If I swap to the 3D view, you'll see why. The default configuration of the particle system is to emit the particles in a positive Z direction. Let's examine our particle system in the inspector and fix that. First, I'm going to set the start speed to zero, because I don't want my particles to be moving along the Z axis. Then, I'll change the Z value of my rain generator game object's transform to negative one, so that it's in front of my background, which has a Z value of zero. Now you should see a blob of particles emitting in the middle of your background. We want these particles to be moving along the y-axis, so to simply achieve that, we'll provide a gravity modifier for the particle system. In the inspector, I'll go ahead and change this value to 2, and you can see the effect that has. We're already much closer to something that looks like rain. Next, let's change the shape of our particles. You could perhaps more correctly do this by creating a sprite for your raindrop. However, it is possible to do it just using the scaling tools within the particle system. We can change the shape of our square particles by modifying the scale value of our rain generator game object's transform. I'll go ahead and play with those values a little bit. If I change the x scale value to 0 0.075 and the y scale value to 0 0.5, I end up with something that looks a little more like a raindrop. I think I'll keep this for now, but feel free to tweak this to whatever looks good to you. Once we have the particles scale to our liking, we need to emit them across the entire width of the screen. To do that, I'll expand the shape section of my particle system in the inspector and change the shape to box. From there, I'll increase the x scale value to stretch my box across the width of the screen. I'm going to pick a value that looks good for my scene right now, but keep in mind that if you're supporting multiple screen sizes, you may want to write a script that will calculate this for you. In my case, it looks like a value of 400 will do the trick for now. Next, let's move our particle system above our background so that rain is actually falling from the top of the scene. To do this, just change the Y value of the Rain Generator Game Object's transform position. I can move it just barely above my background, but check out the effect that has when I play. We can really notice the acceleration of the particles, which I don't think looks very nice. What I might do instead is move it considerably higher than the top of my background, so that the particles have already had some time to build velocity. I think that looks a lot better. Now, to make it so that we don't have to wait for the first particles to fall into the scene, let's head back to the inspector and check pre-warm on our particle system. Looks like we need some more rain droplets. This is the fun part. Head to the emission section of your particle system and increase the rate over time value. Be aware that if you make this value too large, you may exceed the default max particles value and see a break in the rain. Just tweak both of these to something that works for you. It would also be nice if our rain was not purple, so let's make a material to fix that. In the project window, within the assets folder, I'll create a materials folder. I'll then right click and create a new material. Let's call it something like rain material. I'm going to change the shader type to sprites default, and then change the tent color. Pick whatever looks good to you. I'll go with some kind of semi-transparent dark blue, I think. Once your material's finished up, head back to the inspector for your particle system and expand the renderer section at the bottom. You should see a field for material. Go ahead and drag your rain material into there. When you play, your rain should be whatever color you picked. As a few closing tips, I'd recommend decreasing the lifetime of your particles. If I zoom out in the scene view, I can see just how far off screen these particles are falling. Fix this by decreasing the start lifetime value in your particle system component. If you don't want all of your raindrops to be the same size, you can easily fix that up as well. Head to the start size field in your particle system component and click the drop down arrow on the right side. Select random between two constants. I'll pick 0 0.5 and 1. When I play now, I think that looks quite a bit better, and it almost appears as though some of the raindrops are falling further in the background. I think that about does it. 
as you can see, Unity's particle systems are pretty powerful tools, and I would definitely recommend exploring all the other sections in the component that we glossed over to learn more about what you can do with them. Hope this video was helpful to some of you out there. I'd love to hear any feedback you might have so that I can improve the next tutorial. If you're curious, all of today's assets came from my upcoming mobile game called Blink. If you want to know more about how I'm developing that, feel free to check out the weekly devlogs I post. Thanks a bunch for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.